Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks, Tom, for your great prayer this morning, and Joe, to your great yes. singing as usual. This weekend and coming weeks, we are studying the book of Hebrews for our meditation this morning in preparation for that. Find in your Bibles, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Again, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. We'll read that in just a minute. Our study of Hebrews makes clear that the glory of God does not consist in crushing men and women and reducing them to miserable submission and slavery. Instead, Hebrews outlines the glory of God consists in, of his undying love and commitment to us through the sacrifice of his son Jesus. Let's read our passage in Hebrews together. Again, chapter 2, verse 14. <clears throat> Since the children have flesh and blood, that's us, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil. What this verse means is God made perfect, Jesus perfect, through what he suffered. Mm -hmm. Why should Jesus suffer? Here are three reasons. One, it was through his suffering Jesus identifies with us. Because Jesus lived on earth as a man just like you and me, he has felt all of our pain and struggles, all of our temptations. Two, through this identity, Jesus sympathizes with us. Jesus literally feels with us. So for context, it is almost impossible to understand another person's sorrows and sufferings unless we have been through them ourselves. Mm -hmm. For example, a healthy person may not have the conception of the weariness of the person easily tired or a person who has never been free from pain. Another person, another example is a person who is married or has a close family or an extended support group of friends might find it hard to relate to one who feels alone and maybe forsaken. Before we can have sympathy, we must go through the same things that the other person has gone through. Jesus, the righteous sufferer, has experienced and knows all of the suffering and all of the pain we can feel. Number three, it's because Jesus sympathizes, he feels. Jesus can help. Jesus wants to help. He has met our sorrows. He has faced our temptations. As a result, he knows exactly what we need, and Jesus can give it. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Through Jesus, his sacrifice, because of his death, his burial, his resurrection, Hebrews brings out and teaches us that Jesus sits with God, not as our judge, but one who makes intercession, so he's between God and us, so that when we enter the presence of God, just as we are right now, we go not to hear his justice prosecute us, but we hear Jesus plead his love for us. And that is something that we need to be so thankful for, mm -hmm. so much for that. Let's pray for the bread. Our God in heaven, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for giving him to us. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice, for your broken body. We, we thank you so much that we can go through you to God. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Help us to take this bread in a way that is worthy of that sacrifice, <coughs> and sacrifice and it is pleasing to God. And through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
pray for the cup. God, we come before you again. We thank you for Jesus. We know that he endured painful suffering on the cross, shed his blood for us, and that blood today is purifies us and atones for our sins. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for him. Thank you for that blood. And it's through his name.